they send me another message. So if you're okay with us recording, uh, just press okay and it'll continue on. So today, as um, for those of you who don't know me, first of all, my name's Michelle and I've got Kyra um, who will be assisting me today and she'll introduce herself in a second. Um, so today is all about saving with your Thermomix and cookie do. Our um, grocery bills are getting um, very expensive and um, we're just going to give you some tools on the toolbox to reduce that down. Um, you know, talking about food wastage, meal planning, using cookie do and using your Thermomix. We might give you some ideas of things that you um, may not even know that you can make in your Thermomix. So you might think, oh, wow, that's super hard. I would never bother with that. And we're going to talk about some things and hopefully we'll inspire you to um, add some more things to your repertoire. So, Cara, did you want to introduce yourself? Um, and <clears throat> we can get started. I'm just going to mute myself and um, just message Cherie so she can get on. Um, I'm going to actually, if you also change the view to speak of you, you'll see who is actually talking. So everybody should see Kyra um, on the big screen. Excellent, off you go, Kyra. <laughs> Michelle, did you want me to continue on with starting with the first dish or? Yeah, why not? Okay, all right. Well, hi everyone, I'm Kyra. For those that don't know me, I've been a Thermomix consultant for almost nine years and I absolutely love it. But I tell you what, what I love also about Thermomix is we're always learning. We're learning new things every time we see it, every like all the new collections that come out, we're always learning new things. So I love to be able to share that with others and that's part of our job as a Thermomix consultant. And it's not really a job when you love what you do, hey. So we're going to get started by making a um, celery leaf granata, um, gremolata. I have to say that right. <laughs> so I'd love to know in the chat if you use your celery leaves for anything and what you actually do with them. Because this is something that's actually stuff that we normally would either throw in our compost or pop in the bin. Um, but I'm learning more and more about it. But one of the things I did learn very early with Thermomix is that this is where all the nutrients is in the celery itself. So a lot of people are discarding this, but this is valuable nutrients right here. So with this, I would normally have told my customers when they're making, uh, when we do the delivery and we do the handover where um, we make the vegetable stock, I would definitely pop this in the vegetable stock instead of celery stalks okay so but tonight we're going to learn a new dish so let's so all i've done is i've actually rinsed all this and dried it off and i've actually used it yeah i knew you would kaylee <laughs> i would have told you that when i did my your delivery um so yeah so i've washed all these off and used my simmering basket to help me do that and then drained it off laid it all out on the tea towel so it dries it out a bit because this awful lot of water gets caught on there and we're going to pop all of this all these leaves in here but oh sorry let me just go back <laughs> because i wanted to explain to you that we also need to make lemon zest so i've just peeled my lemon needed half a lemon so i'm just going to press home and I'm gonna, I've popped it into some paper towel just to allow some of the, um, the oil from the lemon skin rind to actually um, absorb into the paper towel. And now I'm just gonna chop that up to start with. So I'll just pop it on 30 seconds. It won't take that long. I'm just basically listening for it. have a look and just check so I didn't want to actually I just need to do that a little bit longer one sec beauty all right so I didn't want to actually clean the bowl and then make the, the zest and then clean it again so I've just chopped all that up now and now we're going to pop in our celery. 
beautiful. And some garlic cloves. I've got them in here. Um, a, a quarter of a teaspoon of dried chili flakes and some salt. So we're just going to pop all that in. I just weighed it out previously just so I had that organized. We've got the lemon in there already and we've popped in some lemon juice. So two tablespoons of our lemon juice. Oh, and the oil. Nearly forgot the oil. Getting all excited about chopping it all up. Beauty. I'm gonna pop the lid on. And this is our blend mode. 10 seconds. Oh, see, it was done in way less than that. Let me just look at that. All done. Look all the all the beautiful green colour. Nothing like a Good. Now, you're probably wondering what on earth this is all for, but that is the recipe. That's it. How quick and easy was that? And we've got all these beautiful nutrients right there. So I'm going to show you a little bit later on what we're going to use that for. Is that right, Michelle? <laughs> yeah. She's just going to unmute herself. So we just thought we'd just intro with that. And then I'm going to show you a couple of dishes of how we'll use this um, and what we'll use it on. Excellent. So are you going to do the soup or did you want me to continue? No, no, no. I'll do the soup now. Yeah. Okay. So, Good. yep. Give me a second. Do you want to chat for a minute and then come back? Yes, definitely. Hold on a minute. Thank you. Spotlight me and oh, spotlight Clara. So there is this book. It's not on Cookie Do. We've got a little mini collection on Cookie Do. It's called um, Less Waste. And it's a great cookbook with lots of information here to eat what's in season and to eat the whole part of whatever piece of food that you are eating. So with this, we have got um, celery. And here there is a whole bit on celery and what to do with the leaves. So it says here, the leaves can be um, used for salads, herb garnishes, or you can actually use it for pesto, which I never would have thought. Um, and it says it actually um, pairs really well with nuts and hard cheese. Um, so that's really great. And there's also here an all-in-one celery juice shots. And they've said, um, unlike traditional juicing, our all-in-one celery juice retains the fibre. So it's low waste and also arguably the most complete nutrition, uh, nutritionally. <laughs> celery is high in potassium and in vitamins, um, A, C and K, and is linked to improve hydration and reduce inflammation. So I'm just going to find who that is and just mute them. Sorry, um, um, Ruth, I'm muting you. So there's heaps of information. It tells you other dishes that you can use your celery. Um, it tells you how to revive link celery, um, how to store it. Um, yeah, all sorts of information there. So this whole book is all about that and that's absolutely fantastic. So this one here is using um, aquafaba, so using the can, the water from the can of the chickpeas. Um, what else is on in here? Um, beetroot, so even using the, the stems and the tops of the beetroot, all sorts of things. I've made quite a few things out of here, I find. But um, a recipe that we, I've actually made it twice and my family absolutely loves it. It's called chicken, called chicken and veggie risoni, I think. No, chicken and risoni bake. So when I make this, the only um, leftover rubbish I have is actually the skin of the, oh my goodness, Ruth, I'll just mute her again, um, is the skin of the onion. Uh, everything else I actually put in. So it's the stems of the broccoli, the stems of the ca cauliflower, the stems of um, the asparagus. Everything goes in here and it is absolutely delicious. 
So as I said, I've made that twice and I had my cousin over and I served it up to her. And um, yeah, it was a real hit. So that is definitely a cost saver book. It's filled with um, not throwing anything out. There's even in here, believe it or not, I haven't tried it, but my friend has. I don't know if Kyra has. When she comes, when she speaks, she can let us know. In here, there is a vegan pulled pork recipe, which is using, does anyone have any idea what um, part of the fruit that that would be using that you normally would throw out? And I can guarantee every single person here would throw this out. Any ideas? Cherie's looking. You can type it in the chat if you can't come off mute. Jackfruit? No, yes, you can make um, you can make pulled pork from jackfruit, but we're talking about not um, throwing food out. It's actually made from banana skins. Believe it or not. Oh, Cherie's written banana skin. Yes. So I don't know if anybody's ever tried that. Have you tried that, Cherie? I can see you. No. Um, my friend did and she said it was really good. I haven't tried it yet, but yeah, it's, that's how it's going. Like even the skins of the bananas, we're showing you how to use. So um, yeah, so that's great. And that book's only $35, so it's a bargain as well. I'll come off mute now and, I'm oh, sorry, I will mute myself and Kyra can continue on. Sorry, guys, I just had to get the rest of the ingredients happening. So anyway. So what we're going to do now is make a pumpkin soup. And, you know, honestly, um, pumpkin soup is just so versatile, but honestly, so cheap. So um, really handy to have pumpkin in the fridge for all sorts of recipes. There's loads, but I'm going to change it slightly tonight. But I'm going to use just our normal basic um, our normal basic pumpkin soup recipe. So I'm going to throw the onion in. But I'm going to throw in a couple of slices of bacon. That's my little, my little change tonight. Sometimes I'll do things like put in red curry paste, that kind of thing. Make it your own. It doesn't have to be exactly what's on the recipe, um, the cookie do recipe. As Michelle will tell you, she will throw in whatever's going a little bit sad in her crisper to make use of all those vegetables as well. So I'm just going to pop my lid on. I just like the combination of bacon with pumpkin and uh, tonight. So, alrighty. So we're going to chop that all up. Press next, and we'll give it a scrape down the sides. Let me just grab another spatula, and it's all chopped up. And. Now we're going to add some butter. Now, if I didn't have butter in my fridge, you can use the old trusty olive oil um, or a vegetable oil if that's all you've got. But I use a lot of, of olive oil. And now we're going to pop our lid on and that's going to cook off for a few minutes. So the only other ingredients I'm going to put in tonight are the, is the carrot and the um, pumpkin. But you can pop in a potato, sweet potato, anything like that to use up. We're going to use our trusty old veggie stock. Who doesn't love this? It's incredible. If you haven't made the chicken stock, I also recommend that. So um, I'll keep making this while Michelle continues to show you tips and tricks on cookie do. And then I'm going to show you how we use the gremolata at the end on this soup and another dish I've got for you. Awesome. Thanks, Kyra. Just let me get in and change the spotlights. Excellent. Okay. So how does or how can a Thermomix save you money? Yes, it is an investment, but when you purchase that investment, it's going to give you back so much more. We, in the 1990s, in the recession, Borwerk, who is the owner of the, the, the manufacturer of Thermomix, the company, they were the only company that actually moved forward with profits during that time because people, um, you know, realised really quickly they couldn't afford to be dining at a restaurant or they couldn't afford to be eating that takeaway that they used to eat or they couldn't afford to, um, you know, buy all the luxurious extras that they used to purchase before. Um, so they could see the value in the investment of investing a Thermomix to um, then reap that reward once the, the investment was initial or the asset was paid. 
So we do have a very old cost-saving guide, which um, we are updating. I was hoping it will be done by today, tonight's class, but unfortunately it's not. It should be done in the next couple of days and I will follow everybody up with an email and you can have that information. The cost-saving guide, you may have seen it around, was an individual person, nothing to do with Thermomix. She actually calculated how much money she saved in 12 months with a Thermomix and it was actually over, and this was, I've been in a consultant for eight years and it's been around the whole time. She saved over $6,000 in one year from what she made in a Thermomix. And I always joke, oh, she must be an accountant because who else would actually take the time out because it wasn't a Thermomix generated one, it was an individual person. Um, and that's how much she saved. So she actually saved three times the amount of her investment. So that's a pretty good return. If there's any accounts out here, they can work out what that return is. And we will be working um, towards that new one, as I say. So um, all of you on tonight, I believe, have got a thermomix. So um, what is, you can type it in the chat or come off mute, what is one thing that you feel now that you've got a thermomix that you've dramatically saved on? It could be. You know, the way you purchase, it could be um, an actual dish, it could be an ingredient. <clears throat> I'm sure he's coming off mute. You can type it in the chat if you can. I was going to type it, but that's yes. easier to say it. Um, it I'm not actually really sure. But I know um, I make breakfast smoothies all the time that have, heaps of greens and fruit and protein powder and um, chia seeds and heaps of really good healthy stuff that are so easy to whip up. So I don't know, cost, it's huge cost saver, but it's certainly mm -hmm. something that's easy to make and good for you. Exactly. If you were going to a cafe and having that at a coffee shop, you'd probably be paying you know, $15 for something oh, yeah. like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's fantastic. And do you find if you get fruit um, that's cheap or fruit that it might be going, you know, you know, going not so great in your fridge, going off, that you can freeze that and then not lose that um, ingredient? You can chuck that in frozen and bury it. Why are we saying good fish? Yeah, it's only between. So you just do <laughs> what was that, my sorry? Mother my mother-in-law said, okay. It gives her really good brain food with all those ingredients, so it saves her going into a nursing home at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great. That is a great point. Back when I first started, we actually used to speak about, um, you know, reducing your doctor's bills. Like if you're not paying mm. to go to the doctor or chain, uh, paying for mm. medication, that there is a huge saving in itself. Not only mm. the medicine side of things, but your well-being. So I think you hit the nail on the head there. Definitely. <laughs> Sarah um, so, said something in the chat there. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm going to have a little look on the chat. I saw um, <clears throat> Danny wrote um, breads. What did she say? I was going to top breads and stock. Kayleen said lunchbox snacks like cheese and bacon, squirrels, squirrels and muffins. Yes, definitely. And then Sarah, who said she uses it as a blender, but um, what did she say? Individual appliances because it heats. It's a powerful blender and food processor and stock for sure. Excellent. So yeah, you're looking at the investment of you getting one great investment versus um, paying for all individual appliances. And, you know, um, Neralee's on today that's got a TN31. So her machine's a minimum of eight years old, if not um, more. Um, I've seen, you know, I've met people that have got their original TM31 that's 15 years old and it's still going strong. So, um, you know, there's not too many appliances that you can say that. I'm just going to quickly share my screen because we do have a little visual here that I wanted to show you. And we're here. This is um, a smart savings costing table. So yogurt, cheese, and, uh, cheese scrolls, which Kayleen mentioned. Pizza, muffins, which Kayleen mentioned. Um, cupcakes, so if you've got a birthday party or a birthday, um, a really nice um, cake. We spoke about with um, Cheryl, the breakfast protein drinks and um, vegetable stock paste, I think most of you had said. So I've actually just done the price comparison here. With these eight items alone, we're saving $32.38. 
that is unbelievable. And we're talking about one muffin and one cupcake, you know, um, so, and one scroll. So if you're making a batch, this is going to even be even more. So this is just giving you a bit of a, um, a comparison. So for me, when I got my Thermomix, it was yogurt and vegetable stock, just changing those two items. I actually saved about $25, $30 a week just from those two items from now making it myself from scratch, which is quite an eye opener. So things like we've got the pizza margarita there. So if you buy takeaway food, looking at can you make that takeaway food in your Thermomix? You probably can and it's probably going to be quicker, taste, more, uh, taste better, better for you and um, you can make it from scratch and you know exactly what's in it. So have a think about if you do get takeaway, how much does it cost you and how much would it cost for you to make in your Thermomix? Does anyone have any comments on that? Any stories that they want to share? Well, I know, I don't know if any of you are on um, <clears throat> the Skinny Mixers chat group. All the time, people go, oh, I need to give the Skinny Mixers butter chicken um, recipe to the local Indian shop because I just spent $60 to feed my family and it tasted disgusting. The one I can make in my thermo mix is heaps better. Um, and there are heaps of um, cookie do recipes that have a butter chicken. Actually, my favourite ones are on cookie do. The Sam Woods No Butter Chicken is a winner. Um, and Nerilee said, you know, not only the, the money saving and the health, you know there's no preservatives or additives in your food. So thinking about, you know, not only what you can make as in ingredients as a whole. So, you know, if you've got leftovers, you can um, you can take it for lunch. How much does one lunch, a coffee and a wrap or a salad cost you when you're at work? That can pay your Thermomix off. It's, it's crazy. Or if you've already got a Thermomix, you know, looking at, well, that's going back into the kitty. It's giving you a return on your investment. So um, we can run through some basics that you can make in your Thermomix. Um, does anyone have any basics that they make um, that they want to share? And Sarah's just put in something in the chat, something about falafels. Let me have a look. Falafels are so cheap to make yourself but expensive to buy and they're always dry. Yes, 100%. And in the Less Waste Cookbook, Sarah, there is a falafel recipe that's made with broccoli stems. I had that on my meal plan and I never actually got around to making it. And that um, celery gramolata is also in here too. So, yeah, definitely the falafels are in here, just a, new, a different version of that as well. Cool. So basics, what basics can you make in your Thermomix that you wouldn't have imagined of making before that you're making now that are saving you money? I Fruit definitely, one? Michelle, I definitely think when it comes to entertaining like my dips and all of those sorts of things, salad dressings, um, mayonnaise, um, all of that. I would never have made it from scratch prior to having a Thermomix. And now it's just so easy. The ingredients are usually in the cupboard. It doesn't matter if someone turns up unexpectedly, we can still whip up something really yummy yeah. um, that's cost effective rather than going and getting takeaway or buying it at the supermarket. Exactly. So we've got fruit loaf. Um, it's cheap, everybody loves it. Making butter, Aaron's new to the Thermomix and that's what she, she's found as a cost saver for her. Um, Sarah said falafels, um, custard, um, quick and easy, no preservatives. Um, milling your sugar, your almond milk, your flour, your custard, your rice flour. Yep, spot on. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna open up cookie do. We're gonna have a little look at this. Oh, I did have it open a second ago. Just give me two secs. Um, <clears throat> like I make things like peanut butter, brown sugar. Um, you know, things. I thought I was a pretty good cook before I had a Thermomix and the Thermomix is just taking me to the next level. Like I would have never imagined making brown sugar or peanut butter. And peanut butter is literally one ingredient. I chuck the, I chuck the peanuts in and blitz it down. So dips. So Kyra mentioned dips. So I'm just going to put in sun-dried tomato and capsicum dip. This recipe here was one that I priced for our cost saving. This is like those gourmet dips with the parmesan cheese, the cashews, 
the price of this when you price it up is actually half price because it makes double the quantity. So you could pop half in the freezer or make half or have half to go. If I've got leftovers of this, what I actually do is make scrolls and have this as my filling of my scrolls. And I put some cheese and some baby spinach in there. And that is a great side to Kyra's pumpkin soup that she is making right now. So thinking outside the box, thinking about what ingredients you've got and what you can make with them. So um, we had butter mentioned. I don't know, is there actually? Let me have a look here. So just a little lesson on cookie do. If you know what you want to make, you can type it in. So if we say um, peanut butter for argument's sake, I can type that and find the peanut butter recipe, okay? Um, if you wanted to make something, so if I had peanut butter and chocolate for argument's sake, I could put both those two ingredients in. It's going to give me ingredients with peanut butter and chocolate in them, okay? So you can run it as a search with, and I've got a typo in there, but you know what I mean, and it understood what I meant. Um, so you can do your ingredients or you could do your um, what you want to make. Um, so just here, I'm going to just get rid of this. And then here on the side, you can search by recipe or you can search by collections. So what I'm going to do, and this is exactly what I wanted, I wanted to see what recipe books are all about basics, pantry basics. We've got one right here. 11 recipes that are everyday basics. So granola, that was one that we didn't mention. Butter we mentioned, peanut butter we mentioned. Um, aioli, cauliflower rice. You'd be surprised how many people you meet that buy frozen cauliflower rice or pre-made cauliflower rice. It takes you literally... A couple of seconds, the blade is not even on um, sh the sharp side, it's on the blunt side. So five seconds to do a cauliflower. It is crazy. Uh, let's go back. What else have we got? Your nut milks. We didn't mention that. This one's oat milk, but, um, yeah, nut milks. Your jams for your scones there. Your sauces, I think Kyra may have mentioned. And what's this one? Grinding your coffee and doing, like, a cappuccino. How much do you spend on coffee? You can actually make a coffee at home so does anyone else have anything that they wanted to add to that condensed milk yes danny that is a huge saver at christmas when i'm making fudges or cheesecakes and things like that you're paying actually like over three dollars for a can of condensed milk you make it for 30 cents it's literally water a bit of milk powder and sugar that's it the cheapest ingredients um Narrowly said yogurt, she lived at Palm Island and um, she used the thermo server with that. So that was a major cost saver for her. Pizza. Michelle, I had a, I had a customer, she was a single mum with children that had allergies. Mm -hmm. She had four kids. So, you know, a lot of mouths to feed. Mm -hmm. And she bought a Thermomix and she saved, in what she saved in making her own rice milk alone in two years, paid for her Thermomix. That's crazy, just from one ingredient. One ingredient that she changed where she made her own rice milk and the savings that she made, she paid her Thermomix off. So that is huge. The other thing I personally find a rip-off now to buy in the supermarkets, now I know what it's what it's made of, is golden syrup. Yes, like, seriously, Let's find that. You pay like $6 for a tub of it and it's got like three ingredients, sugar, brown sugar, sugar. boiling water and a slice of lemon. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It. Crazy. And there's, um, there's no way, uh, you know, and I think I worked it out once. It was like 56 cents compared to $6. Yes. I was just about to say, I think it's like six, uh, 60 cents. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And, again, when you're doing your baking at Christmas time, that's a huge saving. Huge. And that biscuits. Yep, definitely. So that's how you can search. So you can search here um, by your recipe, like your ingredients, what you want to make, or if you just press search, leave that blank, press search. Everybody can see my screen, can't they? Can you see it, Clara? And then here you use the Dropbox and have collections. If you were searching on a PC or a laptop, you'll have an extra Dropbox of articles. 
And they've got, it's like little blogs. So if you want to know about you know, entertaining at home, dinner ideas, that's another cost saver. You can go in there. If you want a lesson on making pastries, you can go in and, and look at these, like rolling them, what to do, how to blind bake, cutting out your cookies, decorating. There's all sorts of information, making pastas, ice cream, you know, all sorts of things. Yeah, ice cream, that's another cost saver there. The list can go on and on and on. What I love about Cookie Do is searching a recipe. Now, I always talk about this, and when I say this at a demo, everyone goes, oh, my goodness, you were so right. Have you ever bought sour cream? I'm just going to stop the share so I can see you all. Have you ever bought sour cream and um, use a dollop, put it back in your fridge, then as the time goes, the kids are going in, your husband's going in, everyone's going into the fridge. That's how cream's getting pushed back and back and back and back in the fridge. Then after two weeks, you might do a bit of a tidy up. Then you find the mouldy sour cream because the spoon's gone in, shoved at the back of the fridge. I can see lots of nods and smiles there. We've all experienced that. So what you can do with cookie do when you were meal planning, I can say, hey, I've got beef stroganoff. I'm using a dollop of that beef stroganoff out of, uh, sorry, of that sour cream in my beef stroganoff. What else can I use? So I can, what else can I use that ingredient? So while I'm meal planning and doing my shopping list, I can go sour cream. I can go, okay, so all these dishes here have got sour cream. So I can use my filter and then go, actually, I think I want to make, I've got enough dinners. Give me a sweet bake or a dessert. I want something sweet with my sour cream. And then this here is going to give me, there's some cakes, there's some crepes, there's a cheesecake. There's all sorts of things here that I can have a look at and go, actually, do you know what? I've got some cheap carrots and some sour cream. I'm going to give these um, cupcakes a go. Or, oh, that's right, I've, I've made myself some, um, some sweet and condensed milk. I'm going to make a cheesecake. There's heaps of cheesecakes here that have got sour cream and, um, you know, the sweet and condensed milk in it or whatever it is. So that's how you do it. It could be strawberries are on special and you've got sour cream and strawberries. You can put those in and see what you're going to do with that. Just a little tip too, just so you're getting the most out of your cookie do as well. I'm just jumping. On the top right hand of your screen, it should have your name or I'm pretty sure it has your name to begin with. You can go in here and view that, change whatever you want the name to say. You can put a picture of yourself if you wanted to. You can say what type of cooking styles you're, you're interested in. So if you are a vegetarian or you like to save time or save money, you can add those tags in. And this here is what I want to show you. The preferences. Get in and type in English. You want all English recipes. And then you can put in here the country. So put in Australia, Canada, United Kingdom and United, um, and United States. I've just read that back in front. Um, and update the filter. So every time you search, you're not just searching Australia, you're searching all the other English-speaking platforms and you're going to get so many more recipes by doing that. Did everybody know that you could do that? No? We've got a few no's, so that's great. If you haven't come on and wasted your time, you have got, um, you found something there. So I think that's super important because um, you want to be utilising and getting the most out of your, um, your cookie do. So that's as simple as that. Just go to the right-hand side, type your name. Or your name should be there. You can type it to whatever you want and then um, search filter preferences and then that will come up. Now, if I go to explore, when I explore and I type in, I don't know, butter, for argument's sake, You can see up the filter. I've got Australia, Canada, UK, USA, English, and I've also said give me access. I've put the accessory for the peeler cover and all the accessories that are included. So by putting butter, there's over 3,000 recipes on those platforms with butter in them. Simple as that. Here's a cost saver, ghee, making your own ghee, clarified butter. That is a huge cost saver. So, yeah, the list can go on and on and on. So... Um, does anyone have an idea? Let me stop the share again. Does anyone have an idea? And I'd love you to come off mute or um, type it in the chat. Do you know how much food waste we actually throw out in Australia? 
this fact is huge and it's really, really scary. 25%. What was that, Barry? 25%. Yes, 20%. So if you have a think about, um, you go down to the shops and you go to Coles or Woolies or wherever your, super, your local supermarket is and you're spending $100 worth of shopping, you're actually leaving, you're giving the lady or the man at the checkout 20 bucks, and you're walking away with 80 if you're walking away with five bags of groceries, and I can assure you at the moment that costs you a lot more than $100, you're leaving one behind in the car park before you even get home. Is that astonishing? Does that scare you when you put that down? I can see Cherie's nodding. So if we can reduce your waste by using cookie do, you can get back that 25% of what you're spending on your grocery bill. So, you know, a family spending you know, $200 a week I know I spend probably more than that, but what does work on 200? 20% is actually $40 a week that you're actually binning before you even start. That is huge. You can pay off or over two thermo mixes um, in that time. And using the Less Waste Cookbook, you're even using the whole ingredient. So, you know, out of your carrots, if you're buying Dutch carrots, you're getting your carrots and your tops. Your beetroot, you're using your beetroot tops. Your celery, like... Um, and you do a vegetable stock and people buy the pre-cut celery in the plastic in the tray. You know, buying a whole celery is cheaper because it's not processed. And then you've got those leaves that Kairos just made that gramolata. You can make your stocks and your soups and things like that. I, when I um, have got dead stuff in my freezer or, oh, sorry, my crisper or, you know, not dead but on, on its way, I actually just whip up a soup. And when I email you guys as a follower, I will um, send you my soup. And it's literally five minutes to prep. Just your leftover veggies. You can chuck in like Kyra's done today, a bit of bacon to add a bit of flavour. And it's not a lot. It's just a rasher of bacon or a little bit of chicken, a bit of leftover chicken breast that you've got either pre-cooked or um, sitting there left over. Um, chuck it in. And then I walk away for 20 minutes and come back and I've got a beautiful brothy soup with vegetables and we love it and it just hits the spot. Then you can make something like Brazilian cheese puffs or scrolls or bread rolls or whatever it may be. I've just gotten recently into sourdough and I used to spend $14 a week on sourdough and that's just the cheap one from Coles. It wasn't an artisan um, one from a bakery or from a market or anything. I'd be spending $14 for one. And now I'm making that myself. And it's got lots of love. So I'm not saying if you're time poor, that's probably not something to be making because it is, um, I've got two starters happening. My kids are called it Bob and Karen. They said that uh, it's my new pet because I'm always nurturing and looking after it. But it's fun. It's really rewarding. And I'm saving. It's costing me next to nothing, just a bit of flour. And I've been getting my flour from Costco. So it's gone from um, $13 for five kilos to um, I think it was $10 for 13 kilos um, at Costco. So really, really cheap. So it's really costing me next to nothing to whip out these sourdoughs. So just thinking outside the box. And the key to saving your money, and I'll go back to here, is getting organised. Because I can assure you, um, without you even telling me, I know all of you are time poor. Um, you've got young children or you're busy, you're juggling working a business or working a job, you know, whatever it may be. We're all time poor. Whether you've got young kids, older kids or no kids, we are all time poor. Um, so this is, what, this is how you get organised. So I'm just going to show you. And I've only just really started. I never really practised what I preached. I never really used to meal plan. The way I used to rock and roll was 4 o'clock. Okay, I've got a chicken and a carrot. What can I make? I used to get on cookie do and go chicken and a carrot and find what I was going to make. Then my son goes, Mom, we're always rushed in the afternoon. There's too much pressure. We're eating late. Then I've got to do the dishes. That's my job. So I listened to him. And for the last few weeks, I've been meal prepping, meal planning. One, to keep my grocery bill down. And two, to help him out because he voiced to me that he didn't like us eating late. So since I've been meal planning, my afternoon chaos has cut in half. It's been so calm. And generally by 5.30, my dinner is made. So that's definitely a bonus. So today we had this beef stew. Never made it before. I just typed in beef stew, found this because I've um, had some stewing beef in the, um, 
the freezer and some um, older vegetables in my crisper I wanted to get rid of. Tomorrow I'm doing some bulk cooking. I'm doing a lentil and bacon soup because I had some lentils and I had some bacon in the, in the freezer and there's some veggies there that I've already got in my crisper. If you haven't tried this recipe, do yourself a flavour, favour, black bean spaghetti bolognese. So I made it once with the black bean spaghetti. My family screwed up their nose at the black bean spaghetti. I just do it with normal spaghetti now. So it's probably not a gut health recipe anymore because I'm taking out the nutritious pasta. But this here feeds the masses. It's making over two litres of pasta sauce. It's got only half a kilo of mince and a can of lentils and it goes so far. Every time I make it, my husband says it's the best bolognese I've ever made. And you could, you know, make this and pop half of it in the freezer because it makes that much. And anything like that bolognese or casserole or soupy is only going to enhance in value, in flavour. And then I've got some vegetable stock paste because I've got some old veggies I want to get rid of. And then on Saturday, I'm going to make myself... Um, another sourdough loaf and I've got my discard. So rather than throwing that out, there's heaps of recipes that show me how I can get rid of my discard. So I made the last time. I'm going to try these crackers. This time, I don't know if you can see me, I've got my new roller, my cracker roller that I'm going to um, give a go to make professional crackers, I'm told. So I'll keep, keep posted and you'll see. Lasagna, super easy. I'm going to make that on Sunday. And then this is just something I've got planned for next week with a, with a client. So by going here, looking at my meal plan, I can meal plan two ways. I can meal plan just what I want to, um, want to cook and then I can create a shopping list or I can do my meal plan around the ingredients I've got at hand. So I'll just talk at the moment about shopping lists. So here I've got my shopping list for the last week, but I'm going to clear that and press clear all. So now we'll just pretend... I needed to go shopping for these things that I haven't meal planned out of my fridge or whatever. I'm meal planning with the recipes. So if I just go here, when you see the three dots, you can do this on your Thermomix, on your TM6 or, um, or on the computer or your phone or whatever. And I'm going to see there's a button here, add it to your shopping list. Things don't automatically add to your shopping list because you might be cooking out of your fridge, your freezer, your pantry, and you don't want to add it to your shopping list. So we'll add this one to our shopping list. We'll add this one and this one. We'll just do three. So now if I go over to show ingredients, I can search all the recipes by category. Sorry, all, yeah, all of them together by category and it groups it all together, like where you would buy it from. So obviously water, I don't need to buy water. I've got plenty of that in my tap. Um, so I can tick that and you can see it's removed now. And you can go through. You can search by recipe. So you might go, okay, so what do I need for this recipe, that recipe, that recipe? I find just if you're doing bulk shopping just by category, but you can break it down and see, okay? So we'll go through here. So with this particular recipe, I just did the stew. I didn't do the ghost mashed potato. So if I'm not doing the mashed potato, I can actually get rid of the ingredients of the mashed potato. So I don't need the potatoes because I'm not making it. I don't need my, and I don't need salt because I've already got it. I don't need butter. Um, I don't need milk. Okay, so that's everything there. And then I can go through and see what I need. Um, and then again, with your black bean sauce, you can go through and see um, what you've got, what you need to buy and so forth. If I go down the bottom, this here is showing me what I've actually crossed out. If I go, oh, actually, I thought I had milk, but I don't. I'm going to pop that back on again and the milk will then reappear on my list wherever it was. I think it was in the mashed potato. The milk should be on there somewhere. Yep. You can also add ingredients. So you can go, oh, actually, I'm actually going to do some baking and I need some extra sugar. So you can just chuck that on. And then... You can actually order your ingredients. So you can click that. It's going to log you into Woolworths and then you can um, add them to your cart. You can change the, um, the brands and different things as well. You can do that. Another option you can do is you can share it. So you can SMS this or email it. If you're doing it from your phone, you can SMS it. So if you're feeling sick or under the weather and you go, oh, I need to do some shopping but I couldn't be bothered going out or my baby's sick or whatever, you can email this to your partner or your teenage 
kid or your neighbor and say, oh, do you mind if you just pick up these couple of ingredients for me? That'd be great. You can print it off or you can do your ordering online, get it delivered to your door or click and collect. What does everybody think of that? Is that good? Yeah, that's it's good. Awesome. <laughs> Hopefully that's taught you something. I didn't know you could add back actually. So that was good. Yes, yeah. So down the bottom where the um yeah, where they are, if you go, oh, I don't know about you guys. Sometimes I'm doing things that are Russian. Um, heavy fingered and I might do two instead of one or something like that so I can go back and then go oh hold on where was that I thought I needed xyz and um, unclick it and it's there so what I've been doing if you are a personal customer of mine you would have seen on my group page on the weekend I actually went and cleaned out and did a stock take of my pantry and actually found I had about $50 of cooking chocolate in there another time I've um cleaned out and I had about $60 worth of, co of coffee because you just get it and keep shoving it in the back. So what you can do is do a search and go, actually, I've got six cans of canned tomato and I've got a whole lot of beans and um, lentils. I want to get rid of the stock that I've got in my pantry or, you know, the dates are going, going to expire soon on these. How can I get rid of them? You can clean out your freezer and do a stock take of your freezer and go, oh, I actually forgot I've got that extra... Um, you know, stewing meat or steak or, um, you know, meats or lamb chops or whatever it is. Um, and doing a, um, a stock take on your fridge, your crisper. That is our nemesis, your crisper. You chuck it in there, close the door. I've got Tupperware containers and sometimes they keep them so fresh and you forget that they're actually in there. So um, doing that and then you can say, okay, so I've got some lamb and I've got some potatoes and I've got tomatoes, a can of tomatoes. What can I make with lamb? What do I say? Lamb, potatoes and tomatoes. And then there's all these different recipes that I can look at to find. Oh, curried lamb soup. That sounds great for a winter's day. Do you know what? I've got all those ingredients. Let's give it a go. Oh, and there's some naan bread. I've got some flour as well. I might make the naan bread or some yogurt that's going to go off. I can make some naan bread with that or whatever it may be. Can you see, do you think that this, is this something that people do or is this something that I've inspired you to actually have a go off? Come off mute. Don't be shy. I'd love to hear. Or if you've got a tip or a hint of how you stop tape or how you save money on your groceries, I'd love to hear. If there's a, you've, you've picked up on a lot of features that I've never used. I've 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 been sort of using the basics of cookadoo, mm -hmm. and yeah, I've sort of just not been using a lot of the stuff you've been mentioning, which is good to do now. Awesome. And do you think that would give you some time and some money back in your pocket, Barry, by using oh, those features that I've showed you? Hundred percent. We're 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 terrible for having stuff in the crisper, as you talk about, and then just it goes off throughout. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, you're not Robinson Crusoe. We're all bad at that. And I think yeah. um, it's something that I'm looking at more um, because, you know, a lettuce, I don't even like iceberg lettuce. It's $12 for an iceberg lettuce. Like, that's crazy. Um, yeah. You know, I buy baby spinach and everything's bulked up with baby spinach. That's what we do in my house. But, you know, but if you were to have iceberg lettuce, you could do a Google search and then you can find some beautiful San Choy bao or something like that that you can go, oh, actually, I forgot about that recipe. Let's use my um, lettuce before it goes off. Um, so, yeah, really doing that. And if you do do a stock take and you haven't done it for a while, you might actually just need a couple of fresh ingredients and you might not even, you might reduce your grocery bill from two or $300 a week, maybe to $50 just to buy your stock standard staples just to get you through the week. How would that sound if you've got your car rego due or your rates on your house or overdue rent or whatever it might be, if you can find a handy $250 in your pocket? It's pretty amazing. Michelle, I love that it also saves me time when I'm doing my shopping in the actual supermarket yes. or if I'm organised enough to do click and collect or I don't do delivery very often, but click and collect's a bit of a faith. Mm -hmm. But just being able to know exactly what I need so I can just go boom, 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 boom and get out of there as soon as I can, um, I find that that's even like a huge win for me as far as time saving. So Time is money, and I don't love being in the supermarket. 
hundred percent. And also another cost saver. I COVID taught me to um, shop online. I love doing my grocery shopping online now. It's something I used to do here and there. I, I know Cookie Do is a Woolworths platform. I'm a Coles girl, <laughs> um, and you still can use it with Coles. You just can't order your groceries. You just got to do it manually. But I pay nineteen dollars a month for Coles membership whatever it is and i can have unlimited grocery delivery for free for 19 dollars. it's crazy so um when you shop online you're actually saving money because you're not going down the aisles going oh that's a new product oh, i'm just going to pick that up or the kids oh mom i want a chocolate or i want this or i want that or oh that's on special i'm going to get five of those and that's when you find your 50 dollars worth of cooking chocolate or your 60 dollars worth of coffee that i found in my pantry when I've cleaned up because you're buying stuff that you don't need so if you are on a budget sticking to a shopping list and doing your online shopping you're not going into the shops to be tempted by other things yeah the other thing is useful Michelle is if you see something on it that is reduced and and not you've not used it before but you're like wow that seems like a good price to buy it I like to then search on Cookie Do to see what I can do with it um, to see if it is actually going to be worth it for my family to give it a go. And I've saved money that way as well, especially buying the, the more expensive cuts of meat mm -hmm. um, and being able to freeze it, being able to mince it up, being up, you know, all those sorts of things. 100%. I think you hit the nail on the head there, Kyra, because this is where shops and marketing get us. They go, oh, you know, buy three and get one half price or, you know, the noodles are 50 cents this week or whatever, not that you find anything under five bucks on special, but anyway, but if, you know, whatever it is, and you go, oh, we're going to get 10 of those because it's a bargain and then you don't use it and you're throwing it out because it's expired, that is not a special. It's a special, like Kara said, if you go back on Cookie Do, put that ingredient in and then meal plan. Another thing quickly that I'll just quickly touch base on you can do meal prep. I've met people in cooking experiences that would spend all day Sunday at tight at the kitchen sink, prepping for the whole week because they work in Sydney and they just want time with their kids. Now they've got a thermomix, they've told me where they used to spend the whole day in the kitchen. They might have it maybe down to an hour or two hours in the kitchen and they've got the rest of their Sunday for free. So, you know, that is giving you time back as well, as well as saving money because then you're not tired at the end of the day and you couldn't be bothered cooking and you're getting that takeaway or whatever. So investing a little bit of time is going to give you so much time back and so much money back. So a lot of you said, yeah, I've got a Thermomix, I don't use it to its full potential or I've got a Thermomix and I don't use Cookie Do. Hopefully this here, whether you own a TM31 or a TM6, hopefully with me showing you what you can do on Cookie Do, it's going to give you some bucks back in your pocket. So Kyra, we're just about ready to wrap it up. Show us what you've got. It looks absolutely delicious. I'm going to remove me so you can really get in <laughs> and get those taste buds tantalised because they look delicious. All right. So this is actually last night's dinner that I've reheated. So it's actually potato masaman curry. Um, if you ever get to do the beef and potato masaman, take, don't, don't do the quick version, do the long version. It's really easy to do. There's not very many steps, but it just cooks away humbly in your kitchen and it's amazing. So I've just popped some of this on the top because it's just, it just like literally, it's just like, just takes it to the next level. It is beautiful. And you're not going to notice those extra little bits of ingredients um, and the nutrients, you're going to get that. So it's just an added way of um, using it up. We use, I made the pumpkin soup or pumpkin and potato, and as, I mean, pumpkin and bacon. And as you can see, I've just decorated the top. But again, it's just a way of you utilising this ingredient um, just to take it, the meals to another level. So the pumpkin soup with a bit of cream on the top, oh, yeah, that looks fancy. But putting a little bit of that on there just takes it to another level and um, all those packed in nutrients that Michelle mentioned before. What else I would also use it for after tasting it is things like, you know, you'd use a basil pesto. Well, this would, I would stir through pasta, no problem at all. And it tastes so good. Um, I would pop it on the top of a steak. So if you grilled a steak, you've got your veggies or your chips and salad or whatever, I would definitely pop that on the top. I would also um, use it as like a salad topper. 
like you know you know just stir through it's got the olive oil the lemon juice in there the salt and pepper so it's just like a dressing so I would totally put that through that that's just some of the things that I could think of off the top of my head just to make use of it it will last in your fridge about three to four days um, in a sealed container so you want to be able to be putting it on things to use it up but honestly, it's it's beautiful. I would totally do it. So fresh and tangy. I, I would totally make it again. Awesome. Thanks, Cara. Just sort of another really good cost-saving tip as well. Um, we buy our herbs that you might just use a couple of sprigs for whatever and then you forget about it. There's two tips I want to show you or tell you about. I put my fresh herbs in an airtight glass jar, seal it, your berries and your herbs last for weeks in there, just airtight, just closed, nothing in there, no water or anything. Um, berries, I did a whole lot of blueberries and strawberries when they were cheap and I think I got about four weeks out of them with my test. Um, and your herbs last ages. Your pestos and um, different things, it doesn't matter if you're using carrot tops, if you're using the celery tops, if you're using... Um, coriander if you're using um, parsley if you're using basil whatever herb you've got going or whatever herb that's a little bit dodgy just chuck in and um, make your pesto from there that is a huge cost saving if you're going to the shops and buying your herbs and then letting them go all slimy and your crisper that's money that you're throwing out the other um, thing is michelle is to pop your olive oil on the top of it to seal your basil pesto and it will last for ages yep. ages Definitely. And another thing that um, Danny had said when I said you can search by recipe and category, she hit the nail on the head there. If you search by category, when you're shopping, you can see really quickly the aisles and you've just got that on your phone. What I love too, before I had cookie do or before I had a thermo mix, I'd go to the shop and go, yep, I'm going to make beef stroganoff. I'd get to the shops and go, okay, beef stroganoff. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I've got the beef. Yeah, I've got everything else at home. Then I come home and go, oh, I've got the mushrooms. That's the major ingredient. You can search cookie dough on your phone when you're at the shops and go, oh, actually, I feel like beef stroganoff tonight. Remind me what ingredients are in it and you can find it. Um, so that's really handy as well to do your searches while you're in um, the shops as well if you haven't meal planned or if you just go, oh, I haven't done dinner. I'm not I'm about, I'm not going to buy takeaway this month. What can I make and go from there? So um, Simply Delicious Cookbooks also got lots of budget-friendly meals as well if you wanted to grab that cookbook. It is on Cookie Do, but there's lots of cost-saving info there. Our gift with purchase, and I probably should have had it here, but I don't, is our rose gold pizza tray and our muffin tray. Um, and I've forgotten what the other thing is. Is it the West Coast Cookbook? Oh, no, I've forgotten. I've got a mental block. Is it, look, Danny? Is it, yes, yes, Simply Delicious Cookbook, yes. Um, and the pizza tray and the muffin tray. So that's worth $105 that you're getting for free. And 36, interest, uh, 36 months interest free. So for less than $17 a week, you can pay your thermomix off. And we're just spoken about not um, reducing your waste if you spend $200 a week on groceries. Just that alone, you saved you $40 a week. So that's crazy. So reach out to your consultant. I will follow up everybody um, via email with those cost savings when they come to hand um, and just some information. I'll send you my soup recipe that's on the recipe community and just a little bit more info. Hopefully um, this has really helped you with your meal planning and your um, cookie do and your cost saving and time. Um, if anyone wanted to, if got any last words, come off chat. I'd love to hear from you. But thank you so much for investing an hour in um, your thermo mixing to get um, hopefully a lot more time and money back in your pocket. Thanks, Michelle. You've inspired me to um, get going back with it again and really start <coughs> getting all those ingredients and saving heaps of money. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Leanne. And I know health is really important to you. So hopefully we've shown you a couple of really easy tips yeah. you can get the nutrients into your food and um, not throw out the goodness, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Kyra, for um, stepping up. We were meant to have an in-person cooking class today at Cessnock, but we actually postponed that to August because um, of sickness. So many guests um, were sick. And we've also got an in-person cooking class at Tugra next Tuesday as well. I will email you that link if you wanted to come and then you'll see us cook, learn heaps of tips and tricks and get to taste the food as well. 
Thanks so much, guys. Happy thermo mixing. And if we can help you, please let us know. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, girls. Awesome job. Thanks, Linda. Love you Thanks. both. Bye. See ya. Thanks, Aaron, for jumping on. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh, Karen, are you still on? Karina, are you still on? No, she's still on. She Thank up. you. Have a nice night. Thanks, Aaron. See ya. I'll stop the recording.